Hey everybody, Mike D here. Welcome to the program. Today we return for part two of Big D on Lake Oscawana. Now D has been trying to teach me how to power drop shot and I haven't been successful at all. I actually haven't even caught a fish yet. Um, so here we are for part two and he's offered to eat a dead crawfish from his live well if I don't catch a fish. Let's go to Lunkerville. <laughs> It seems in every town in America that there's a secret fishing spot where the water runs clear and the bass are always biting. And at that spot, there's an unsung hero who knows every stump, lay down, and lily pad. Seems all he's got to do is wet a line. <laughs> and sure enough, he's reeling in a big bass. So if you're looking for real people with real fish stories, then hop a ride. We're going to Lunkerville. just going to motor right around this point and you'll see there's a rock island right around the bottom. As you know, is my trolling motor still down? Yeah, because so we're, we're not going, going, we're far. Not going yeah. far. No, I'll probably wind, up hit, probably wind up hitting something, knowing my luck, but <laughs> yeah. People don't realize how mentally challenged this sport is, you know, especially especially tournament fishing. You know, you you could go hours without a bite and all of a sudden you get a bite and you got to be ready to set that hook. Like this. This one. Oh, he came off. I definitely had him. Did you see the flash? Uh, I think what you're doing wrong is you're casting it too far and you're fishing it lazy. Your, your rod tip's got to be higher. The whole point of this presentation is to have the bait up high. With the rod tip being low, that that's 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 what I mean by fishing lazy. Like. You're doing this, where you should be here. Okay, and then target areas. I just need yeah. to put my glasses on. So like, like, look, for instance, like if I was- Oh, I had a bite. There you go. See, like, see that hole right there? I would target this hole right in there. See that hole? Uh-huh. That's a spot. Ooh. He never had Let's a shot. Him. Is that a oh. rocky? Yeah, it's a rock face. He went for a ride. Could you imagine how he feels? Going to eat something, and all of a sudden he's like, "Wee!" <laughs> There's one. Best, best. Yeah. You don't have to eat that crawfish, dude. Thank God. <laughs> oh, he chased it to the boat. Nice. Mike, gotta start on somewhere. The board. Not a keeper, but glad to see him. Whew. Good job. Lunkerville is presented by South Bend, a fishing tradition since 1906. Also sponsored by BassResource.com, the ultimate bass fishing resource guide. Mudville Catmaster, the only complete catfish tackle solution. Welcome back, folks. Let's see what Mike's up to. So if, if I was gonna ask you, yes, name one thing, not a bait, that you would never want taken away from you for fishing. Okay, for instance, mine would be my side imaging. Okay. Well, I, I would say fishing with somebody. I, you know, I'd prefer okay. fishing with someone than fishing alone. Okay. You know, because a big part of fishing to me is- Camaraderie. Camaraderie, getting to know someone, uh, spending time with them out in the water, in nature, you know, you're forced to talk with yep. that person and get to know them. Especially like fishing with people that I don't know well, like you. Yeah, yeah. And of guests course. on the show. You get you get to know that person. So you I guess know. it's my show. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I don't want it ever taken away. <laughs> That's so true. That's awesome. I'm sure you meet a lot of different personalities, man. Oh yeah. There he is. Uh, oh, Texas. Yeah. He slammed it. Oh, you had to do that? Come on, stop. I'm going to let you go. Good boy. You guys don't count. They Look, count. Look at those teeth. 
Now you said something earlier that bass don't have teeth. What gives you the raw thumb? Uh, they have, they have, they're really not considered teeth. They're like grippers, and that even even stripers have it. It's what they uh, hold on to the fish with. They have teeth in a sense, but they don't have the teeth where they could cut up a bait. Yeah. You know, so therefore, like I said, they have to eat everything head first or they'll choke to death. I never knew that. You will all fit. Okay, you ever go striper fishing? Yeah. Okay, you notice how they tell you either to count to 10 and set the hook or wait for him to run, stop, and then run again? Yeah. That's because they, when they, they grab the bait and then they start swimming away with it, they stop, they flip it around so they can swallow it head first so they don't choke. Like if you ever, uh, a, little, a little tip if you ever striper fishing and you want to catch like a really big striper, um, go to uh, bluefish that are blitzing, mm -hmm. okay, and take a bunker head uh, and throw it into the school. The bluefish won't eat the bunker head. And what happens is, is the bass, the big bass are underneath eating the scraps. Oh. So you'll catch a really big striper that way. Interesting. You got all the tips and tactics. Well, I owned a bait shop. Yeah, but that was mostly salt water, right? Yeah, that was all salt water. So, Dennis, tell me a little bit about yourself, especially how you got into fishing. Uh, I'm just a normal guy, you know. Um, you know, I started off, I, I grew up in Whitestone, Queens, and we were about five blocks away from the Throgsnake Bridge. So I used to go popping for snappers with my father, um, probably from the age of nine. Um, then after, uh, slight, slightly after that, I think I was like 16 or 17. Um, I don't know if you know the, the Cross Island Expressway. Mm -hmm. There's the Bayside Marina. I owned the bait shop there for a little while. During the summer, I used to ride my bike there. And um, I used to, you know, I had the shack. I used to net bunker and, uh, you know, stuff like that, and sell, sell bait and, and hooks and stuff. And then from there, um, a friend, uh, it was actually my uncle's cousin, was a member of a bass club, and he asked me if I wanted to fish. And I was like, yeah, I'll try it. And uh, I was pretty bad at it for a while, you know, uh, but I fell in love with it right away. Now I work for, uh, they don't like their name mentioned, but I work for like probably the biggest utility company in the world as a subcontractor, and I work with, I do gas work. Tell me about your family life. You got kids, married, what's uh, the deal? No kids. Um, my family, you know, I come from an Italian background. So my family, you know, my sister, my mother, my father are very close. I'm single. My uh, ex-girlfriend recently passed away from complications of Crohn's disease. If you notice I got the, the ribbon. I'm really sorry to hear that, man. That, yeah, that was tough. Um, not gonna talk too much about it because you don't want a big guy crying on your show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, does fishing help? Uh, is it therapy at all? Fishing is the only time that I don't think about anything but fishing. You know, like honestly, and in a weird sort of way, it's hard to explain, but I'm okay with what happened because through my faith, I believe that she's in a better place. So you started out saltwater fishing, then went to freshwater fishing, right? Yes. And what do you like better? Not even close. It's not even close. And why is that? Because it's, you're, you're when you catch a bass, you're, you're not sitting there and just, 
you know, tossing a piece of bunker and waiting for a fish to eat. You're making a, a fish, especially if you catch a bigger fish. Like if you catch a, you know, you catch a fish that's like, you know, four pounds in New York plus, mm -hmm. you're catching a fish that, you know, has lived a long time and you're fooling him into eating something, you know, it's just, it's just totally different. It's the, it's almost like a, almost like a murder mystery or, or a, a jigsaw puzzle that you're putting together step by step, especially in a tournament. Ooh, there you go, there's one. Nice. You got it on the swim, yeah. especially in the tournament. You know, you, you, you gotta actually read the fish. Yeah, like, like, like see, for instance, that fish, every fish tells you a story, okay? It's like, you know, it, it tells you, it's a little piece of the puzzle. Like, where did that fish come from? Why did he come from there? How did he eat the bait? You know, why did he eat the bait? He ate that bait when I reeled it in. You know, why did he do that? Because we've been struggling the whole day. You know, they've been eating it. Did they just turn on? Was there a weather shift? Mm -hmm. You know, is it different type of water? Like, you know, what is the difference? I like uh, both salt water and fresh water, but I hear what you're saying. Um, and I think I prefer fresh water more because of that. As silly as it sounds, you gotta be in relatively good physical shape to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, you're driving two hours. You know, you, you're launching the boat, you're putting it in, you're fishing, especially in a tournament. You're fishing eight hours, you're constantly moving around. You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, a lot of people that aren't diehard fishermen aren't gonna do that. Yeah. There you There's go. One. There's one. Yeah, that, that's a rocky. <laughs> and they count on lunker belt. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you just made my day, Rocky. Bye-bye. That's, that's the better one. Oh, he got off. Oh. <laughs> oh. Right off that weed edge. Yep. Another little tip that I learned over the years is that large mouth feed up, small mouth feed down. Really? Yes. They're just two different animals, man. It, it's That's why it's, sometimes you could catch a large mouth, you can't catch a smallie. Sometimes you could catch smallies, you know. Sometimes they're just both on and, and you're gonna you're gonna load the boat with either one. But you know, smallies are line shy, large mouth to me aren't. I got one, oh yeah, I got crushed again. They have turned on, my man. We're back in New York City fishing today. This girl from the New York Post called me, Mackenzie Dawson, and she's like, Mike, I heard you can catch fish in New York City. I'm like, yeah, Mackenzie, we can. Let's go fishing. So I packed up my gear and I grabbed a subway up to Central Park. And I gotta be honest with you, I was a little concerned. We have this reporter from the New York Post, the pressure's on, I gotta catch fish and the fish are in a post-spawn blues type of pattern. And, you know, I was worried if we don't catch fish, this story might not go the right way. I mean, th this, this is a big deal. I'm with the New York Post. Man, I hope I can catch some fish. Welcome, Mackenzie, to Central Park Lake. Thank you. This is my honey hole. This is my favorite place to fish. And although a lot of people say there aren't any bass in here, there are. Put your finger on the line, hold it right here. Bring the rod back into about the two o'clock position and then when it releases around the 10 o'clock position. So we're in the rowboat, we're fishing. I think it's gonna go pretty well here. I think she's gonna write a good article. I'm teaching her how to fish, how to cast in those shady areas, how to work that Senko. I'm teaching her all those little tips on how to fish Central Park Lake. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing one of us was a reporter because we happened upon a little mystery. I've never seen this before. It looks like a purse. Is it Gucci, Prada? <laughs> Is there an arm attached to it? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, should I even touch it? Oh, God. This is scary. 
<laughs> oh god, I can smell it. It really stinks, right? Here I am just... That's a little bit ominous. Like, can you think of an innocent reason why the handbag would be... Like, nobody loses a handbag of that size. Somehow the story's not going to be about Lunkerville anymore. <laughs> AccuView. She wears contact lenses. Headphones. Proactive. Isn't that the get rid it's of an acne, oh, It's acne. acne medication. Okay, she has acne and bad vision, you know. Okay. okay, let's get back to fishing. Well, that was kind of a Nancy Drew moment. Maybe we should report it to the police. So that was exciting and all, but I'm here with a New York Post reporter, and I gotta catch a fish. Otherwise, it's gonna be some dopey story about this guy from the city who fishes in Central Park and catches handbags, and I can't have that. We have to catch a fish or else I'm looking like an idiot. I mean, who knows what they're gonna write? This is the New York Post. So I'm applying myself, and we're catching a fish. Then all of a sudden, things got a lot worse. The pond police shows up. They're busting us for shooting without a permit. We're with a New York Post reporter. This is for the this is for New York Post reporter. And I could see the New York Post headline now. Guy pretends to be fisherman, takes reporter fishing in Central Park, and they catch a handbag. So I had to do what I had to do. I had to lie. Well, we're not filming. I had to stall. I'll talk to him when we go in. I'll talk to him. What's his name? What's his, what's his name? Peter, okay, I'll take care of him. I understand, don't worry about it, yeah. <laughs> but this guy kept after us. He chased us down. Okay, so I'm, I'm feeling desperate, then I had an idea. Shannon is in another rowboat. I asked him to stall the pond police. No, what we're saying is, if we were to give you maybe a few extra bucks, would it matter? Yeah. And I made a beeline for that one place where I always seem to catch a fish. There's always one fish there. We get there, I say, Mackenzie, cast right at that spot. So immediately, the line starts to move. She's got a fish on. I say, Mackenzie, set the hook. The problem is, we don't have a camera on the boat. The camera is in Shannon's boat, but I think he picked up some of the audio. Okay. Hold on, keep it on, keep it on, keep it on, keep it on. Okay, let the... <laughs> there you go. Okay. Now you have to hold it with pride. Okay, wait, I'm not kissing it. <laughs> oh, okay, let it okay. go. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yay. yeah! Very nice, <laughs> high five. So needless to say, article is out, and let's see what she has to say. Additional support for Lunkerville provided by Fishing Paradise 3D. Play now for free on your iPhone, Android, and on Facebook. Hurricane Salt Tackle, a force to be reckoned with. Celsius, ice fishing gear for hard water anglers. Same spot as last time. Feels like a decent fish. Oh, he's Ooh. going the troll motor. A little bit better. Nice. It's a chunk. Yeah. Not bad. Very nice. He actually just picked it up very. This spot's phenomenal, dude. Did I tell you this hump is crazy? <laughs> you can sit out here all day and nobody wants to fish it because we're in 10 with 20 out here. Mm -hmm. Everybody's afraid of that. Nice. Very nice, D. He was just there. He just, you know, lifted up. He just was on it. He was on. Yeah, it was weight. 
And then I just lift it up into them. And... You, you're in the zone. I mean, you know exactly where these fish are. See, to me, I'm just fishing out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, there he is. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's a pick. It's a pickerel. Yeah, there he goes. He's nice enough to leave my hook, though. Took my bait. One. There he is, baby. There we go. Oh. 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 What happened? <laughs> I wanted that to be your first power shot what fish. So I, that felt hefty. Hey, did he? Was he in the weeds? Is that what happened? And he shook off? I don't know what happened, man. I, I honestly, I heard the hook set. I saw the rod bend, and then I saw a bait fly over your shoulder. I had a fish. Yeah, that was definitely that was a fish. That was absolutely fish. Oh. Oh, that feels like a good one. Oh, it's, it's a, a pickerel with a bunch of weeds. You ever smell something so bad and you have this impulse to keep smelling it? Yeah. Just to make sure? Oh, God. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. Thank God you don't have to eat it. Thank God you caught a fish. Yeah, uh, I did catch a few. I didn't have the big numbers, but I did have a big fun with Big D. Man, it Thanks, was a, man, for taking me fishing. No problem, man. Tell us how this day went. It was a great time with great friends. Um, power shotting in the weeds, 20 pound test, um, heavy weight, big baits, um, and we caught we caught a few. As you'll see on the footage, we had a we had a blast. Like I said, great people, great times, great show. You sure you don't want a little taste, a smell? A smell. Oh, that's bad, man. You didn't get very close. <laughs> let me, let me see, let me see. Oh, yeah, that's hard. <laughs> oh, oh, thank man. God you caught oh, a fish. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. my God. Smell, come on, you gotta get away. <laughs> 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 <laughs>